Um, yeah, I haven't done a video since last Friday, which was about the importance of dating coaches. Now, you know, I got something to address. I always got something to address in my free portion before I get to me talking about my main topic. And this was only from one person, so I want like a bunch of people wrote me this. Somebody watched my last video. And I was talking about, you know, Tony Robbins and credibility. One of the things I mentioned was that Tony Robbins said that if you don't have a PhD or a similar academic credential or industry-specific certification of a particular skill set, the minimum thing you need is a book, preferably a paperback or hardcover, that establishes your credibility and should include a large percentage of content that's unique and original. And somebody wrote me, and it cracks me up when people do this. They do this all the time. They, in order to kind of tone down the harshness of their criticism, they'll start off usually giving me a compliment. Like, Alan, I like your videos. I like your books. I like your, your commentary. But, it's always a but, but with all due respect, Alan, wouldn't you say that a lot of your content is just representative of universal game? Universal game. And this is similar to people who try to make excuses and justifications for them duplicating other people's stuff and stealing other people's stuff by making stupid comments like the game is the game is the game. I don't want to go over that again. I've already done at least two videos addressing that whole notion of the game is the game is the game. But this is similar to it. Yeah, this person said, when you say a, a large part of your content is just representative of universal game, first for the person to ask, uh, ask me that question, you know what you're going to get on video. I already... I responded to this person directly, but on video, you know I got to give you, in my very strained, hoarse voice, insert dog face here. Let me break it down to you guys who are young, naive, and impressionable. See, y'all lucky I'm still getting over my cold and flu and I got a strained voice because you ain't got to worry about me yelling at you, raising my voice too much. But I'm going to just break it down in simple terms. There's no such thing as universal game. There's no such thing as universal game. No such thing. There is no such thing as universal game. Here's what there is such thing as. There are certain ideas that you can classify as universal ideas and certain concepts that you can classify as universal concepts, such as attraction. No one person owns the concept of attraction. That's a universal concept. Seduction. No one person owns the concept of seduction. That's a universal concept. Love and romance. No one person owns the concept of love and romance. That's a universal concept. Adultery. Infidelity. No one person owns the concept of adultery or infidelity. That's a universal concept. Jealousy. No one person owns the concept of romantic or sexual jealousy. 
That's a universal concept. So you can have a dating coach or a relationship advisor or a uh, pickup artist that can incorporate, incorporate and include universal ideas, universal concepts, and some universal terminology. Like there's some terms that are universal, like good girl, slut, which I'll get to in a second, whore, gentleman, asshole, jerk, husband, boyfriend, wife, girlfriend, fiance. Those are all universal terminology. No one person can claim ownership over those terms because they're universal. So as a dating coach or relationship advisor or a pickup artist, you can include and incorporate universal ideas, universal concepts, and universal terminology when you do your teaching and coaching. So it is valid to say that some ideas, some terms, some concepts are universal. But here's where the uniqueness and originality comes into play. Is when it comes to each dating coach breaking down the game of dating and relationships. When it comes to each dating coach or relationship advisor or pickup artist breaking down the game of dating and relationships. That's where your uniqueness and originality comes into play. In other words, there should be no two dating coaches that break down the game or put another way, should be teaching or coaching in the exact same manner. If there are two or more, then one person's copying off the other person in the story, in this discussion. If you got two dating coaches that their teaching style and their coaching style is exactly alike, then one person is copying off of the other person. Basically, one person is verbally plagiarizing the other person. Matter of fact, speaking of things like copyrights and trademarks and patents, a lot of people think you can only copyright, copyright and trademark content or signature phrases. Did you know you can trademark a coaching style? Yeah. Like my coaching, my one-on-one -on face-to-face coaching style is trademarked. It's trademarked. That means if anybody was to try to do one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face coaching exactly like me, I could take them to court and sue them. I know at least a couple other people have that. Stephen Covey, well, he's passed away now. But he has an institute called the Covey Institute. He's the author of the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yeah, his workshop coaching is trademarked, which means nobody can conduct a workshop just like Stephen Covey, or they, they risk being sued. Brad Blinn, author of uh, the Ra Radical Honesty. His same with him. He has does these these international workshops. His workshop and coaching style is trademarked, which means if you were trying to conduct workshops exactly like him, you would risk being sued and taken to court. That's what copyrights protect for a book author like myself. Copyrights do not, and I've mentioned this before. This ain't the first time I mentioned this. Copyrights do not protect. the use of universal ideas, universal concepts, universal terminology does not protect that in any way, shape, or form. What it does protect is the manner, the unique and original manner in which you express your discussion of those ideas and concepts. In other words, the unique and original manner, manner in which you break down game. That's what copyrights protect for me, is the manner in which I break down game and teach and coach game. 
copyrights and trademarks protect that for me. So I don't want to get any longer than I already have. I've already went longer than I plan on on that issue. But there is no such thing as universal game. Anybody who says that is dumb, stupid, and ignorant, and uneducated, and unintelligent. If you want me to give you a phone call and tell you that, I will. Give me your number. I'll tell you that. You're stupid. You're dumb. You're ignorant. You're unintelligent. You're uneducated. There's no such thing as universal gain. No such thing. There's only universal ideas, certain universal terms, and universal concepts. But I've met, as I mentioned before, I always use the example of me and David X. Me and David X both teach the general concept of direct verbal game. Direct verbal game. Which again, that's a universal concept. Direct verbal game. I have no ownership over direct verbal game in general. That's a universal concept. Direct verbal communication skills is a universal concept. But if you were to go to a workshop led by David X and go to a workshop led by me, they're going to be, our coach, teaching and coaching styles are totally different. I've heard David X teach, and he's heard me teach. Nobody has ever said to David X, damn, you sound just like Alan Roger Kirk. And nobody has ever said to me, damn, you sound just like David X. David X, his teaching and coaching style when it relates to, to uh, direct verbal game is totally... Now, we have some minor similarities here and there. There's some inevitable overlaps and similarities between the two. But generally, his teaching coaching style is totally different than mine. He breaks down direct verbal game totally different than I do. So if somebody is out there and somebody and multiple people are able to say, damn, he sounds just like Alan Roger Curry, that means that person's copying my shit. He's stealing my shit. He's plagiarizing my shit. Ain't no such thing as universal game. Get it? Got it? Good. See, before I go on to my next subject, Alexa, take me back into cartoon mode for just a few seconds. Okay, as you wish. All right, back to real life, back to reality. If that is what you really want, King Allen, back to life, back to reality. Thank you, Alexa. Mode one. All right, now, there's a term I've used once or twice before on my, excuse me, on my YouTube videos. And I'm guilty of this term. Some people are. There's a term known as pedantic. Pedantic. What does it mean to be pedantic? That means you're very meticulous. Speaking of terms, words and terms, you're very meticulous on how terms are used. Matter of fact, for my longtime followers, they know that the first major place on the internet I used to that you can say the first major place I made a name for myself on the internet was a message board and discussion forum called askman.com askman.com and there was a discussion when I was talking about PUA hate where I was saying most message boards and discussion forums usually have four categories of guys regular posters semi-regular posters Occasional posters and lurkers. Regular posters, semi-regular posters, occasional posters, and lurkers. Like on PUA Hate, for example, I was an occasional poster on PUA Hate. Um, when I first got on Asman.com, I spent probably nine months to a year being a lurker. I didn't post at all. I was just a lurker. And one of the things that made me start posting was I saw a bunch of men and women using the term player 
inappropriately. And it bothered the shit out of me. Oh, bothered the shit out of me. And y'all should know from my videos in 2017, I don't know so much in the last year and a half, but definitely 2017, I did at least two or three videos about the term player. Because see, a lot of men think that any man who's a womanizer is a player and all players are womanizers. Ah, not true. Not true. Not true. There are at least two types of womanizers, which would be honest womanizers and dishonest womanizers. There's honest womanizers and dishonest womanizers. A player is an honest womanizer. In other words, a true player is a guy that, say, has four fuck buddies and all four of his fuck buddies know he fucking other women. They might not know the names of those other women he fucking. They might not know the faces of those other women he fucking. In some cases, they might, but in most cases, they don't. But at minimum, they know that he's fucking, he's sharing his dick with other women. That's a true player. And again, I covered that on these three videos in 2017. That's a true player, man. Is when you fucking multiple women and each of the women you fucking know you fucking other women. That's a true player. A lying womanizer is not a player. That is not a player even though some people inappropriately use that term to apply it to a, a lying woman, as such as some of the people at askman.com did back in 2002. But that's not a player, man. Ask any woman if you don't believe me. Women will tell you. Women themselves will tell you. Most women who are intelligent. A lying woman, as that's what most women call a dog or a pig. That's what most women call a dog, a pig, or a sleazeball. Speaking sleazeball, you know that's alpha male strategies. Favorite term, sleazeball. Speaking of originality, there's two things I'll give alpha male strategies kudos for being original. Even though he be biting a lot of my content from my book, The Possibility of Sex, and everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. I had a guy just recently, got recently got my possibly say it's audiobook, and he wrote me, just like a bunch of other men have. He said, damn, man. He said, Alan, do you realize how much stuff that Alpha Male Strategies be repeating from your book to possibly say? I said, don't even start. I said, I already know. He said, damn, man. He said, I had no idea before I got your, your audiobook. He said, man, Alpha Male Strategies be, be repeating a lot of stuff. And he, I knew where he's going to say the thing he's going to say. From primarily the first four chapters. He said, he said, I don't know about part two of the, the audio book, but he said, definitely your first four chapters. He said, man, Alpha Male Strategies be biting off your book big time. But anyway, Alpha Male Strategies has two unique things. His sleazeball gang, that's how he describes his listeners and followers and clients as the sleazeball gang. Second thing is his funny phrase, Hey, fellas, you got to fuck these hoes asleep. <laughs> you got to fuck these hoes asleep. Now, that's, that's, you know, I've accused him of lacking in originality, but that's original. Unless somebody else came up with that before he did. I don't know. Maybe somebody did. But I like that. Fuck these hoes asleep. So that's an AMS original, again, unless somebody else came up with that before he did. Um, but yeah, that's the three things that most women refer to as a lying womanizer. A lying womanizer is usually referred to as a dog, a pig, or a sleazeball. A player is an honest, non-manipulative womanizer. An honest, non-manipulative womanizer. That's a player. That's when you could call yourself a true 
player is when you get two or more lovers and each of your lovers know you you sharing your dick with other women and they've accepted your program. That's when you can call yourself a true player. So that's Alan Roger Curry's pedantic clarification number one. Pedantic clarification number one. Now, pedantic clarification number two. I hear a lot of men use the term slut and whore. Check out my time if you see me looking at it. A lot of men use those two terms interchangeably. Slut and whore. Those are not the same thing. A slut and a whore are not the same thing. They are not the same thing. What's a slut? A slut is a woman that's one of two things. A slut is a woman that's either highly promiscuous, highly promiscuous, meaning that she has a reputation for sleeping with a high number of men in a short-term, non-monogamous manner over a reasonably short period of time. That's definition number one of a slut, is a highly promiscuous woman. Second definition of a slut is a woman who's extremely adulterous and unfaithful. Extremely adulterous and unfaithful. That's the second major definition of a slut. This woman is extremely adulterous and unfaithful. So anytime you're highly promiscuous and or you're extremely adulterous and unfaithful, that will qualify you for the label of slut. Slut. And actually, that's not a female-specific term. It's more... It's most used with sluts, I mean with women, but a man can be a slut. It's, the only difference is most men simply don't care if they're called sluts, but a man can be a slut too. So it ain't just only a woman can be a slut. A man can be a slut. It's just that most men are not negatively affected by that label. A whore a lot of guys think being a whore also has to do with how promiscuous a woman is. No, 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 no. Nope, nope. Actually, being a whore has nothing to do with how promiscuous you are, contrary to popular belief. Being a whore has nothing to do with how promiscuous a woman is. A whore has to do with what you demand in exchange for your sexual companionship. That's what represents you being a whore. A whore is representing what a woman demands in exchange for her sexual companionship, most notably money. So if a woman meets Joe Johnson and Joe Johnson invites that woman to have sex with him for free and she says, no, I'm not interested. But then Joe Johnson turns around and says, well, what if I pay you $500 to have sex with me? And she says, oh, in that case, okay. She's automatically a whore. That's a whore. <laughs> That's a whore. That woman could be a virgin. So again, it ain't got nothing to do with being promiscuous. That woman could be a virgin, but she's still a whore. If a woman's not willing to have sex with a man for free, but as soon as that man offers her money, whether it's short-term or long-term money, materialistic gifts, offers of employment, job promotions, career promotions, and other similar items of tangible value, of tangible value, that makes you a whore. That makes you a whore. So anytime you're a woman, you could have only slept with one guy in your life, two guys in your life, three guys, four guys, five guys in your entire life. 
So it, being a whore has nothing to do with how many men you're sleeping with, like a slut. Whore has to do with what you demand for your sexual companionship. If you're not willing to have sex with a man for free, but if that man offers you money, materialistic gifts, offers to pay your bills, offers to get you a new job, or if you work for him, he offers to give you a promotion, and you say, okay, now I'll have sex with you, that makes you a whore. That's a whore. I really don't like to do my free portion this long. So I'm going to add. So that's Alan Roger Curry's pedantic clarification number two. Pedantic clarification number two. And my third and final pedantic clarification would be between concubine swinger hot wife <laughs> and slut wife concubine swinger hot wife and slut wife all four of these terms represent what's known as polyamorous lovers. Polyamorous lovers. What is a concubine? A concubine is when you are married and you have a wife. Now, in some countries and cultures, What's known as polygamy is legal. You can have more than one wife. You can have more than one wife. So if you live in a country or culture where polygamy is legal, technically there would be no need for a concubine. Although even men who are married and polygamous might still, like Solomon in the Bible, if you remember, he had, I want to say, 700 wives and 300 concubines. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. What is a concubine? Concubine means simply you have a married man who has an additional lover, who has an additional lover that is very respectful and deferential to his wife. Or if he has two or more wives, to all his wives. That's a concubine. Is when you as a married man have an additional lover, but unlike a mistress or a side piece, like a mistress or a side piece, that's when you're married. A mistress would be if you're married and you have an additional lover other than your wife, but your wife doesn't know about her. You fucking another woman behind your wife's back. If you're married, that would make her a mistress. If you're unmarried and you say you got a girlfriend or fiance and you fucking another woman behind your girlfriend and fiance's back, that would be known as your side chick or your side piece. If you fucking them behind your romantic companion's back. But a concubine means you have an additional lover and your wife approves of that additional. She knows about that additional lover and she approves of that additional lover. That's a concubine. And in some cases, the concubine lives with you if you're married. Like she might be your maid. She might be your nanny or baby, live in babysitter. And she looks out for your children plus you fuck her. That's a concubine. Another form of polyamorous lover is simply known as a swinger. I shouldn't have to define it. I think most people know what a swinger is. 
I think no, most people know by now what a swinger is. If you're in an open marriage or you're in an unmarried relationship and it's open, open, or the formal term would be polyamorous, and eat like say you and your wife, y'all both have additional lovers that you have sex with. That would make both of y'all swingers. Swingers. A, sp a specific form of swinging is also known as couple swapping. Couple swapping is a specific form of swinging. So like, let's say you marry and you got two other married couples that you real cool with, y'all real close. Like all three of y'all couples are close. And y'all made an agreement to share each other's spouses. You share your wife with two other men. They share their wives with you. And all the women share their husbands with each of the other women. That would make y'all what's known as couple swappers. Couple swappers, which is a specific form of swinging. And two other forms of polyamorous companions or polyamorous spouses would be what's known as either a hot wife or a slut wife. A hot wife or a slut wife. Some people, some people in the world of BDSM and polyamory tend to use those two terms interchangeably, but they're actually different. They're similar, but they're different. What's the difference? A hot wife applies to an arrangement known as a bull hot wife cuckold relationship. A bull hot wife cuckold relationship, which is kind of a blend a blend of the BDSM lifestyle and the polyamory lifestyle. That arrangement is a blend of the uh, BDSM lifestyle and the polyamory lifestyle. A bull is, the, is a hot wife's dominant lovers. Dominant, they're usually very kinky, very dominant, and in most cases they are well endowed, meaning they have an above average size dick. <laughs> an above average size dick. Not 100% of the time, but in most instances, a bull usually has an above average size dick. The first thing, they're really dominant, combination of dominant and kinky. The second most attribute they usually have is that they have an above. What, quick side note, some guy might be watching and says, Alan, what, what's considered above average? The main people who usually determine that is either condom companies or medical, what's known as medical urologists, urologists. Condom companies and medical urologists. Um, lengthwise and above, the average penis lengthwise is between five and a half to six inches. Five and a half to six inches. So lengthwise, if your penis is above, if your penis is above six inches, you have an above average size penis. So yeah, that's length. Of course, the number one tool you would use to measure your penis, of course, is what's known as a tape measure. That's what this is. Tape measure. Tape measure. So yeah, six inches. If your penis is six inches or above, according to most condom companies and urologists, that means you have an above average size penis in terms of length, in terms of length. If your penis is less than five inches, that means that's generally considered uh, less than average. Your penis, when, when your penis is fully erect, if it's less than five inches, that means you're anywhere from slightly below average to it could be significantly below average. And between five and six is considered average. 
If you're between roughly, I'd say, five and six inches, that means you're average. You're not above average. You're not below average. You're about average in terms of length. Now, the second measurement, of course, of penis is thickness, or what's also known as girth. Thickness or girth. And that's simply when you take a tape measure and you wrap it around this way. You wrap it around your dick. And according to most condom companies, what is below average, average, and above average thickness-wise? The average thickness of a penis is between roughly four and five inches. Four and five inches. So when you wrap a tape measure around your dick, if your dick is no thicker than five inches and no less than four inches, that means your dick is average in terms of thickness. It's roughly average. If your dick is larger than five inches, that means you have what's known as a thick dick, a fat dick, a girthy dick. If your dick is above five inches in terms of thickness. If your dick is below four inches, that means you have a less than average size dick. Now, some women will insult men's egos and they will call that a pencil dick, a pencil dick. For example, I'll use this device. This measures about, this is some body lotion from a hotel and it measures at three inches, about three inches. So this would be below average. So if you got dick about the size of a lotion bottle from a hotel room, that means you got what some women would call a pencil dick. Now, I wouldn't want to be that insulting with men. You just have a below average dick in terms of thickness. If your dick is about as thick as a, a, a lotion bottle, Average. What would be about average is somewhere between four and five inches. Four and five inches. Let me see here. Okay. This container is uh is roughly four and a half this is four and a half inches this container is four and a half inches if your dick thickness wise is about the size of it that means your dick is average it's not above average it's not below average it's about average if your dick is about as thick as this is is average Anything above five is considered big. So I'm measuring a bottle of Jehovah oil, and this is six and one quarter inches. This Jehovah oil is six and one quarter inches. If your dick is about this big, which is six and one quarter inches thickness wise, that means you got a thick dick, what women call a fat dick. Now, some people might think bigger is always better. That's not true. Most women will tell you that. In the same way, your dick can be too small. Your dick can be too big, too. Trust me. I've had women tell me about that. Sometimes, like, if you had a dick as big as this, this bottle of vitamin water, you think any woman going to let you put that in her pussy? Seriously? <laughs> Real talk. You think any woman going to let you put that shit in her pussy? Fuck no. You might find about 2% of women in society that let you put some shit if your dick is as thick as this bottle of vitamin water in their pussy. Most women be like, get that shit away from me. Because it causes too much pain more than pleasure. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I kind of went on a segue about thickness. What I was talking about originally was I was being pedantic. I was saying that a hot wife, a bull 
The number thing that usually makes a woman select a guy as a bull is he's kinky, dominant, and well endowed. A cucko is usually a guy that's very passive, submissive, and even more so masochistic. Masochistic. What does masochistic mean? That means you get off on being disrespected, verbally abused, and physically abused. If you get off on being disrespected, verbally abused, and physically abused, that means you're a masochist. You're a masochist. There are men who are masochists. They tend to go to a woman that's known as a dominatrix. And there are women who are masochists. They come to a guy like me, a, pro a professional dominant sir. I'm the male equivalent to a woman being a dominatrix. Yeah. So some people are masochists. But yeah, a cuckold is a man who's very, at minimum, very passive and submissive. And usually along with that, financially generous. And in most cases, he's masochistic. And he usually has, not in every case, but sometimes, or I say most of the time, he has a less than average size penis. But that's not 100% true. Believe it or not, there have been situations where a bull dick was not bigger than the cuckoo's dick. So it does happen. Sometimes the bull's dick is not always bigger than the cuckoo's dick. It's just that he's more dominant than the cuckoo. The cuckoo's basically a bitch. He's a male bitch. He's a pussy. So it's not always about the dick size. Although I would say in most instances it is. But it's not always about the dick size. Like, I'm t I admitted this real quick story. I admitted this on Blog Talk Radio one time. I remember one time I was fucking a woman who was cheating on her live-in boyfriend. And while we were fucking... She admitted to me that her boyfriend's dick was bigger than mine, which I ain't gonna lie at the time. I was in my 20s, kind of lightheartedly traumatized. But I was like, what? Another man with a bigger dick than me? Alan Roger Curry, are you serious? <laughs> but no, but it kind of tripped me out because my attitude kind of was like, okay, if his dick is big enough to satisfy you, how come you cheating on him with me? And she ended up telling me. She said there was two to three reasons she actually gave me, but one had to do with dominance. She said, he's not as dominant as you. She said, he's not as verbally kinky as you. And I think the third thing was, she said, he was a lazy fuck. I talk about that in Possibility of Sex. I say, you never want to get to a point where you become a lazy fuck. Because that's when your wife or girlfriend is going to start cheating on you. Yeah, she said, he was a lazy fuck. But yeah, she told me. She was cheating on her boyfriend with me. But she said, she said my boyfriend's dick is both longer than yours and thick. I said, damn, both? She said, yeah, it's a little longer and thicker than yours. But she said, I like fucking you more. Because she said, you're, you're way more verbally kinky than he is. You're way more dominant than he is. And she said, he's a lazy fuck. Then the final pedantic clarification, similar to hot wife, is what's known as a slut wife. A slut wife. Slut wife is very similar to hot wife, but different. Slut wife also usually incorporates elements of both BDSM and polyamory. The difference is a hot wife is very dominant with her, her spouse or her romantic companion, i.e. her cuckoo. She's very dominant with him. Usually she's very disrespectful and verbally abusive towards him. Slut wife is just the opposite. A slut wife is a woman who's either married to a man or she might be in an unmarried relationship and her husband basically just gets off on sharing his wife, fiance, or girlfriend's pussy with other men. He's, a, he's what's known as a voyeur. He's a voyeur. There's a difference between a cuckold and a voyeur. Like most swingers, guys who are swingers are both exhibitionists and voyeurs. Same with women. Most women who are swingers are both exhibitionists and voyeurs. Some men are just voyeurs, but they're not submissive voyeurs. They could be a dominant voyeur. And that would make their wife, fiance, or girlfriend what's known as a slut wife. A slut wife. So those are Alan Roger Curry's pedantic clarifications. Get it? Got it good. Now, I'm wearing out my voice, but 
in my Patreon exclusive portion, I'm going to talk about something similar. And I've talked about this at least once before, which is in the same way a lot of men accuse women of being sexual sluts, sexual sluts, a lot of men are non-sexual sluts. Non-sexual sluts. And that's what I'm going to cover in today's Patreon exclusive portion.